Moloch was an ancient Canaanite deity, often depicted as a bronze, bull-headed idol with outstretched hands over a fire, usually associated with the practice of child sacrifice, although this interpretation remains controversial. While some scholars argue that no bull-headed Phoenician god was known to exist, the sun god was often represented in accordance to the current zodiac age, which 4,000 years ago was Taurus the bull. According to legend, the statue was hollow with a lit flame inside, and while the name Moloch was traditionally regarded to mean king, we must look to the Sumerians to understand its correct astro-theological context. The ancient Sumerians were the first academically recognized astronomers. They were credited with creating the first historical record of the zodiac and used the seven non-fixed celestial objects to develop the seven-day week, the five visible planets to the naked eye, plus the sun and the moon. The first day of the week, Sunday, was dedicated to the sun, and the last day of the week, Saturday, was also dedicated to the sun. Of course, Saturday was named after Saturn. However, the Sumerians described two suns, the one that we see shining in the day and its nocturnal counterpart that shone during the night. The first day of the week was dedicated to the brighter sun and the last day of the week that was called the evil day was dedicated to the black sun. In ancient Mesopotamia, the Magi, from where we get the term magician from, regarded the planet Saturn as the night sun and deemed it to be black, or the sun's alchemical shadow, its polar solar opposite. This ancient Babylonian description of Saturn as the black star stretched down to the Greeks and Hindus, particularly around 700 BC, and should be considered in a symbolic and mythological rather than literal context. The Greeks refer to Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture, as Kronos, who in mythology eats his twelve children, the twelve titans, which represent the twelve solar months, or the twelve zodiacal houses of the sun. Kronos would then vomit them up again, signifying creation, destruction, and rebirth, as Saturn was associated with cycles of time and seasons. While it's true that Saturn was associated with death, this should also be regarded in the context of a cyclical harvest, the opposite of spring, part of the solar year. El, Bel, Kronos, Elohim, and other designations are names of Saturn. Bel, in the reasoning of the sacred mysteries, was both Saturn and Sol. Bel is the Syrian Kronos, the name being derived from Karen, to shine. Corona, coronate, coronal, coronium, chromosphere, crown, are all derived from the word Kronos and are references to the solar, light, or sun rays. So the term black sun can be said to apply to the solar representative at night, which is Saturn, but Rather than just looking at it in a nocturnal terms, this also is applied to the yearly harvest cycle. That's why the celebration known as Saturnalia was celebrated just before the winter solstice, an ancient Roman festival honoring Saturn as an agricultural deity, part of a fertility or nature religion, who the Romans called the Lord of Death, the dark side of the summer sun, the black sun of winter. That said, one should consider its symbolic significance as a malevolent or dark aspect of the sun, which involved rituals such as sacrifice, intoxication from ingestion of psychedelic substances or alcohol, altered states due to prolonged orgies, as well as its alchemical context of transformation, which in a Gnostic perspective equates to individual liberty, spiritual alignment, and freedom from external forces. 
the seven metals known since classical times in Europe were associated with the seven classical planets. The exact correlation varied over time. However, gold, silver, and lead have always been associated with the Sun, Moon, and Saturn. And it's the Sun and Saturn that we'll be focusing on today. So when we hear the term turning lead into gold, we're referencing Saturn as lead and the Sun as gold, which in a spiritually alchemical context speaks to transmuting or refining energy. Lead is the lowest of the base metals, and it was said to carry all the energy necessary for its complete transformation into gold. All the metals beyond lead, meaning of greater atomic weight, will disintegrate over time by radioactive decay and transform back into lead. Saturn is the farthest planet away from the sun in alchemy, and to the alchemists, lead is the metal of redemption and transformation. Astrologically, Saturn is represented by Capricorn, the goat, and also rules Aquarius, a herald of a new age, and symbolizes transformation. So while the daytime sun represented the exalted, Christ-like, solar end of the spectrum, if we look at it in a Christian context, the other polar opposite of the night sun, or black sun, represented by the horned goat, could be seen as satanic. That said, there are two sides of the same coin, and one could not exist without the other, the same way that darkness and light need each other to exist, or left and right, etc. This can be taken in several ways, esoterically speaking. While alchemy refers to the transformation of metal led to gold, the internal alchemical process was really about transmuting raw, carnal sex energy into spiritual gold, refining carnal lust into creativity and divine wisdom. This knowledge of sacred energetic transmutation was forbidden by the church, which explains the acronym F and U and C and K, which means for unlawful carnal knowledge. The tantric practice of prolonging and intensifying the blissful climax of lovemaking and separating it from the expulsion of male vital essence allows for the practitioner to harness the life energy known as chi in the east, prana in the subcontinent, and vril in European secret societies, refining it into spiritual light. That said, the esoteric mystery school techniques meant to liberate the soul are not limited to sexual practices, as it's also considered important to remove deep-seated emotional blocks, usually acquired through past traumatic events, which restrict one's energetic potential, which is best articulated by psychologist and alchemist Carl Jung, who said, quote, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. The latter procedure, however, is disagreeable and therefore not popular. The subconscious can be seen as the dark aspect of the mind and accessing this aspect of self is the focal point of many of the mystery school rituals, which take place at certain intervals of the year. In astrotheology, the journey to the underworld is the night or nocturnal period when celestial bodies fall out of sight below the horizon. When an object is visible, it is regarded as life-giving, such as the sun during the day, and its raw polar opposite is its dark, shadowy, or hidden aspect, which Jung regarded as subconscious. Quote, In the form of a dove, she, Sophia, descended into the water and begat Saturn, who is identical with Yahweh or Jehovah. Saturn, as we have already mentioned, is the other sun, the soul Niger, the black sun of alchemy. The term soul Niger, which literally means black sun, refers to the first stage in the creation of the philosopher's stone 
the negrito, which means blackness. In Jung's view, it's the shadow side of the psyche that drains vital energy from the consciousness as long as it's not illuminated or consciously made brighter. So it is considered dead and represents a skeleton. In Mesoamerican mythology, the black sun is mirrored in the god Quetzalcoatl, who also transitions through the underworld. The ancient Mexicans, or Mexica, also had a dark sun and a day sun. And depending on who you ask, the feminine aspect is often associated with black, as it's the case with the black Madonna or the black goddess Kali, which is symbolic and has nothing to do with race or skin color. The Aztec concept of the passage of the black sun through the underworld was expressed as a butterfly, symbolic of mystical transformation and spiritual rebirth. In ancient Mesopotamia, Saturn was called Moloch, connected to the solar bull, and as I've already established, was not separate from the solar religion, meaning it was also considered a dark aspect of the sun. This is the case for Babylon, the Hittites, Amorites, and Phoenicians, who used the term bell or ball, and to whom child sacrifices were made, along with ritual intoxication, orgies, and altered states, whereby the priests and priestesses could communicate with higher consciousnesses for alleged purposes of divination, which could be considered demons, spirits, gods, discarnate entities, angels, or interdimensional beings. While some sources consider this trance-like state to be, in actuality, communion within one's own subconscious mind, or that of the collective unconscious, others insist it is separate entities which seem to stand outside of linear time, thus able to grant insight, as was the alleged case with the Oracle of Delphi. I'll leave it up to the viewer to come to their own conclusions as I merely wanted to draw attention to the belief system as it still persists into modern times covertly. Many of you are familiar with my first published book called 1666 Redemption Through Sin which is about a heretical movement of Judaism which started with the declaration of a Jewish mystic an ordained rabbi named Sabbatai Zevi, who proclaimed himself Messiah in 1666. He proposed that through acts of sin, such as sexual immorality, one could be led to spiritual redemption and expedite the reconstruction of the temple, the same temple that the Knights Templar revered. And while his movement ended with his converting to Islam, continuing his esoteric practices in secret. Many of his practices and beliefs continue until today, hidden in many of the world's mainstream religions. His name, Sabbatai, literally translates to Saturn, and his ideology can be seen as a continuation from a secret sect of ancient, heretical, Zoroastrian priests known as Magi, 